in the Korean War, we had a problem that we had not encountered before in any previous war, and that is that our we were having pilots that were shot down in North over North Korea, and they were suddenly appearing on film uh, that were being released by the communists confessing to war crimes. They were saying, I was sent to spread you know, chemical and biological weapons among civilian populations because I am part of the evil United States regime. And these guys did not appear to have been tortured. They looked perfectly fine, but they were just sort of saying these things that were wildly false and that we knew were false because we weren't, in fact, you know, dumping biological weapons on civilian populations. But they were, you know, it was propaganda film. So after the uh, war, armistice and we got these guys back we debriefed them what happened why did you say these things and it turned out that they had been broken through this sort of communist brainwashing techniques that's actually I think it really dates back to the show trials under Stalin in the 30s where people would confess to being American agents and so forth and then sent off to Siberia summarily uh, then spread to China and the Chinese in the North Korean POW camps were doing this to our soldiers and it was thing it was things like prolonged sleep deprivation, uh, stripping people naked, uh, messing with the time of day they thought it was by changing the light conditions and, and when their meals were showing up at really arbitrary times, uh, frightening them to, with all kinds of things but th that left no scars, uh, bombarding them with very loud music and, and grating sounds, putting them in severe heat, severe cold, all of these things on top of each other until uh, basically they lost touch with reality because they just, their, their internal resistance to resist broke down. They had what's called learned helplessness and they were debilitated and they became dependent upon their interrogators and were willing to do whatever their interrogators wanted them to do, which was confess to these false propaganda things that they could use for political purposes. Um, and so to this knowledge kind of had some impact the, the famous movie, The Manchurian Candidate, was it's sort of how it manifested in popular culture. Everyone was suddenly interested in communist brain t brainwashing. Uh, but inside the military, it led to the creation of a school called, under Eisenhower, called Survive, Evade, Resist, uh, Escape. See your school. And it, the motto of the school was return with honor. And the idea was we are not going to train our pilots and our dudes that work behind enemy lines who are at risk of capture so that they can resist this stuff and they will not uh, produce these propaganda tapes anymore. And they, in, so at Sears School, which over the next 50 years can, you know, became sort of institutionalized, our, our troops are subjected to things like being stripped naked and, and light and cold and heat and n loud noises and all this stuff. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.